NASA astronauts are renowned for their daring and bravery while journeying into the unknown areas of space. However, even these brave people have had panic attacks and scary times while on missions. What creepy situations have these space travelers found themselves in? Have they witnessed some things that defy explanation? Join us as we examine the scariest things said by NASA astronauts. Number 11, Apollo 10. Let's discuss a strange radio blackout during the Apollo 10 mission. Astronauts John Young, Thomas Stafford, and Eugene Andrew Cernan described the blackout as the most terrifying experience of their lives. John Young is an American astronaut, naval officer, aviator, test pilot, and aeronautical engineer. Thomas Stafford is an American former Air Force officer, test pilot, and NASA astronaut. Eugene Andrew Cernan is an American astronaut, naval aviator, electrical engineer, aeronautical engineer, and fighter pilot. This blackout occurred in 1969 during Snoopy's pre-flight training for the historic Apollo 11 lunar landing mission. The primary aim of Eugene Cernan's Snoopy was to fly close to the moon's surface without hitting it. Snoopy suffered through a nearly hour-long blackout and lost all radio communications as soon as it lost sight of Earth and began its risky journey around the moon. The astronauts were alone and couldn't communicate with others throughout this time. That was most likely their most alone time ever. Even though Snoopy made it to the end of its journey and returned to Earth, you could tell that the astronauts experienced something profound. For Eugene Cernan, he was still in shock throughout the period and described it as the most bizarre and unsettling thing he had ever encountered. It was the longest hour of his life because he couldn't see the Earth and there was no communication. Eugene, on the other hand, felt nothing except stillness, darkness, and anxiety inside the spaceship. At that time, all that separated them from absolute nothingness was a few inches of aluminum. The fact that no one has been able to determine why the radio signals went dead for decades makes this mission to the moon even more terrifying. Some believe NASA purposely shut off communication to hide data since the crew encountered something unknown. However, others believe it had to do with the moon itself, as it may have absorbed or reflected the radio signals. Naturally, there isn't any proof that it did. But given how weak the moon's magnetic field is, the possibility that the moon caused the blackout is also extremely unlikely. According to Thomas Stafford, the commander of the Apollo 10 mission, it was the most lonely human experience. Even though Thomas completed the mission just as well as Cernan did, he also mentioned that maintaining reality awareness was the hardest part. His mind was too overwhelmed by the sensation of being alone in space, and it kept wandering. Every time he tried to concentrate on the tasks at hand, the awareness that they were all alone would dawn on him. What they said was very worrisome, because if the blackout had continued for a few more hours, the crew may have lost their composure. This would have resulted in a mission failure and casualties. What's more baffling is that the astronauts heard an odd whistling noise like it was coming from the radio the entire time, even though they weren't communicating with mission control at that time. Eugene Cernan said it was a weird outer space kind of sound, and at some point they weren't even sure if it was real or not. Astronauts Buzz Aldrin, a former astronaut, engineer, and fighter pilot, and Neil Armstrong, an American astronaut and aeronautical engineer, were exploring the moon's surface at that time. Armstrong made history in 1969 by becoming the first person to walk on the moon. Number 10, Apollo 11. Pilot Michael Collins also noticed the odd whistling sound. Michael Collins was the pilot of the Apollo 11 mission, which in 1969 took humans to the moon for the first time. Collins made an equally significant contribution to the journey as his crewmates Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, despite the fact that he never gained a lot of attention. 
Collins flew the Columbia Command Module, spending nearly 28 hours in orbit by himself, while his co-workers Armstrong and Aldrin descended to the moon's surface. Fortunately, Collins had earlier heard the explanation that the weird sound was probably radio interference, so he wasn't too worried. But Alfred Merrill Worden, an American test pilot, engineer, and NASA astronaut, disagreed with the radio interference idea. He thought the whistling noise was from outside the spaceship. So some astronauts heard the same odd sounds too, and they all concluded that it wasn't an ordinary radio issue. The deafening silence of space on its own is scary enough, but the fact that astronauts reported hearing a similar sound every single time is absolutely terrifying. But what caused those sounds is still a bit of a mystery to date. Number 9. Maurice Henderson Maurice Henderson, who was a senior NASA employee, said he was sure that aliens were here observing us and had always been on Earth since he was aware of so many occurrences and encounters involving them over his active years. After retiring, Henderson wrote several books, mostly addressing the impact of alien influences on the development of human civilization and maybe even the human race. He further said in one of his works that astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin were hovered over by two UFOs in restricted NASA film footage during their historic first lunar landing. Maurice verified several images that had appeared in People magazine in June 1975, only minutes after Neil Armstrong had set foot on the moon. In addition, Neil Armstrong delivered this radio transmission, which is attributed to the Apollo 11 moon landing. Armstrong made a remark on the presence of other spacecraft on the moon. He said, Oh God, you wouldn't believe it if I told them there were other spacecraft here, and they've now gathered at the other end of the crater and are watching us. Even now, NASA disputes these reports regarding the moon landing and claims that Morris Henderson was really an ineffective engineer working for a subcontractor and never affiliated with the agency. However, Maurice believed that it was aliens all along. What he mentioned regarding the Apollo lunar flights was terrifying. Following his retirement, he asserts that there was a lot of extraterrestrial activity during the Apollo 11 mission. He added that NASA even suppressed Neil Armstrong's statement. There were some pictures in magazines as well that showed two UFOs hovering while the first humans set foot on the moon. To this day, NASA denies Maurice's terrifying claims and even issued a statement saying that he was never even part of the Apollo missions. Maybe that's why NASA has avoided going to the moon for the longest time now. However, speaking of strange alien spacecraft, what Gordon Cooper saw was perhaps one of the greatest and most terrifying UFO sightings of all time. Number 8. Extraterrestrial Life Gordon Cooper was an American aerospace engineer, test pilot, and United States Air Force pilot who piloted the Gemini 5 and the Mercury 9. He claimed to have seen an outstanding green UFO fly just next to his capsule in 1963. He kept reporting to Mission Control how the ship would emerge and then vanish for a little while, only to zoom directly toward him and finally slow down next to his capsule. Gordon Cooper claimed to have had a clear view of the ship for over 10 minutes. Even when he descended to a lower altitude, the UFO continued to follow him until speeding off into deep space at an unimaginable speed. Gordon's theory on alien life has drawn criticism from several prominent scientific groups. The terrifying thing about the 1963 event is that the UFO was even detected by radar, leaving everyone puzzled and with no explanation at all. Subsequently, he disclosed that NASA has a rigorous policy on discussing UFOs and aliens. It is that simple. If you are an astronaut and you accidentally see something horrible, you cannot discuss it. However, Cooper was fortunate since this wasn't his first encounter with a UFO. Cooper claimed to have seen a complete fleet of alien ships directly in front of him while serving as an Air Force pilot. In 1984, during an interview with NBC News, he said that people were conceited if they believed they were the only sentient species in the cosmos. 
I think if we look properly, we'd probably find evidence of alien life in this solar system. Cooper stated on the Larry King program in 2001 that alien vehicles and their personnel from other worlds have been visiting Earth for ages. To this day, he has been criticized for his disturbing theories about extraterrestrial life, which may explain why they have always been viewed with mistrust. Number 7. Dr. Franklin Story Musgrave Dr. Franklin Musgrave, considered by experts to be the professor in space, holds a unique status. No such highly educated and renowned person has ever flown into space before or after him. He went on six space missions and the most notable one was Apollo 15. Dr. Musgrave, who holds university degrees in six different fields, made an odd statement. He saw a white flap about three meters long, drifting across space outside the space shuttle's windows. When he returned, NASA said it was probably a component that broke off from the rocket or space capsule. Musgrave, however, disagreed with this interpretation, especially after seeing the same thing again. This time, it was much bigger and looked like a snake, measuring between six and eight meters. However, referring to snakes as extraterrestrial life just increases the controversy and fright around people. Perhaps they are merely organisms similar to us, formed in space by a mix of proteins and amino acids. Or whatever they may be, that's Dr. Musgrave's opinion. Known as the Professor of Space, he is arguably the most learned person to have visited the planet. However, his remarks regarding snakes and extraterrestrial societies were really horrifying. Dr. Musgrave stated that he saw space snakes twice during his travels. However, he is still unable to identify the objects that he sees, even though their skin has a texture like rubber. Even more terrifying is his story, that the snakes tracked his plane for hours before eventually crawling off into the night. Unbelievably, images of snake-like organisms were taken during the NASA STS-61 mission. Although Dr. Musgrave believes it to be a living thing, there are ideas that suggest it may be some kind of advanced extraterrestrial spaceship designed specifically for space travel. But odd and terrifying creatures abound in space. Following his tenure at NASA, Dr. Musgrave stated in several interviews and reports that these encounters were proof of alien life. He claims that these civilizations, which have been on Earth for at least 100 million years, are significantly more developed than our own. However, he proved little chance of success as he continued his research by attempting to speak with these aliens and inviting them to come get him. Even if that seems incredible, it just serves to highlight the fact that some of the most seasoned astronauts have a belief in alien life. Number 6. Yang Liwei There is reportedly no direct sound transmission in space, as we have already demonstrated. Astronauts who have traveled to space may attest to this. Astronauts need support from technology to communicate, even on the International Space Station, ISS. They need to use special radios and headphones to make their voices heard in the vacuum space. Direct speech input of these voice signals is required for the transformer to translate the speech into an electrical code and output it as audible sound on the other end. An astronaut's voice disappears into nothing when he is too far away from the intercom. How is it possible that Yang Li Wei, a Chinese astronaut, heard it? He heard what sounded like someone hammering a wooden bucket on an iron when he launched into space in 2005. The Chinese astronaut Yang Li Wei reported hearing a knock coming from the outside of the craft. It was much like that strange whistling sound heard by the crew of Apollo 10, 11, and 15. But since they all had radio equipment on, the theory of it being nothing but interference is plausible. However, given that there is just a vacuum in Yang's scenario, how is it possible that he heard sound emanating from outside the craft? Even though sound cannot travel across space, Luai claims to have heard something that sounded like someone tapping the spaceship's body or tapping an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. The thought of being in space by yourself, with billions of miles of darkness around you, 
and then hearing someone or anything knock on your spaceship has had to be the most terrifying thing ever. Furthermore, Mr. Yang claimed to have heard the sound more than once and that it was just present at one moment. It seemed to be a strange pounding sound that occurred at strange intervals rather than emanating from within or outside the vessel. But things only get scarier from here. Six more Chinese astronauts claimed to have heard the same banging sound that Li Wei had described between 2005 and 2008. Not only was it unusual, but no one can explain that sound. Number 5. Chris Hadfield An American government study on unexplained aerial occurrences was preceded by a statement by Canadian astronaut and former fighter pilot Chris Hadfield, who held the position of commander of the International Space Station. He said, I've seen countless things in the sky that I don't understand. Hadfield, nevertheless, issued a warning against jumping to the conclusion that these encounters include aliens or UFOs. He considered such judgments to be rash, if not ridiculous. He was confident that there is alien life out there, but he also argued that the hunt for possible extraterrestrial life should be taken more seriously and should concentrate on genuine research rather than amusing conjecture. Number 4. Alan Bean In 1969, astronaut Alan Bean participated in the second mission to the moon. He flew as a helmsman on the Apollo 12 mission, which involved landing capsule operations on an Earth satellite. The primary goal of Bean's lunar trip was to construct research facilities. He completed two spacewalks, which took him over seven hours in order to achieve this. His operations took him close to seas, including the Ocean of Storms, a large lava-flooded region in Prisilara. The landing site for the Apollo 12 mission was close to the Surveyor the Three Crater. A few hundred meters down the trail, Bean saw a strange sparkling item. When he revealed his findings, specialists suggested that it may have been optical illusions, reflections, or even persistent mistakes brought on by the peculiar surroundings. We are familiar with the occurrence of earth shine or moonlight on earth. These occur when sunlight reflects off the earth and onto the moon, covering the moon with a thin, diffused layer of light. The moon's glowing look may also be explained by certain kinds of minerals and rocks that have reflected qualities. Although they are very uncommon on the moon, it is possible that Alan Bean saw a large amount of feldspar, which glows or glitters in the presence of sunlight. Number 3. James McDivitt and Ed White NASA Astronauts Ed White and James McDivitt were part of the Gemini 4 mission in 1965. They saw something during their space mission that NASA has since classified as an unidentified flying object. On June 3, 1965, McDivitt and White in the Gemini 4 mission executed the first ever U.S. space escape when their space capsule was above Hawaii. They noticed an odd thing. It was cylindrical in form, radiated dazzling light, and supposedly measured between 30 and 45 meters. The object also wobbled or spun somewhat. McDivitt snapped pictures of the strange encounter and reported the event to ground control. The event sparked a great deal of discussion and debate among scientists and the general public. Some questioned whether it would be ethically and safely acceptable for humans to travel into space when there were unidentified flying objects. After looking into the occurrence, NASA declared that there was no conclusive explanation for the sighting and closed the inquiry. Therefore, it is unclear if NASA's unidentified objects are spacecraft or objects of alien origin. NASA still maintains that there are reasonable explanations for most of these cases, despite the numerous reports of seeing these objects and the experiences people have shared. On the other hand, McDivitt and White interpreted their observation in a less analytical manner. The two men could only guess about the rest, but they were certain that what they had witnessed was not of earthly origin. McDivitt stated in one of his several interviews that it's hard to talk about what is simply incomprehensible. Number 2. 
Leroy Chiao. A chemical engineer and retired NASA astronaut, Leroy Chiao led a voyage to the International Space Station ISS, and completed many space missions. Following his active career at NASA, he took part in congresses where the topics of paranormal activity, UFO sightings, and even extraterrestrial encounters were discussed. Chiao made a shocking statement in an interview at an event on remarkable events. He stated, I saw a strange unknown being at the ISS. He claimed that this thing had limbs or tentacles and seemed to be floating and nearly transparent. Chiao went on to say that this entity was seated in something that looked like an upside-down ticket and had lights hanging from it. Irrespective of his sightings, NASA never formally validated his claim. In fact, NASA has not released an official statement about whether Chiao submitted his observations or if they were looked into in any way. Number 1. Edgar Mitchell Edgar Mitchell was a famous moonwalker who walked on the moon during the Apollo 14 mission in 1971 alongside Alan Shepard and Stuart Rusa. Beyond his famous role as a Navy officer and aviator, test pilot, aeronautical engineer, ufologist, and NASA astronaut, Edgar Mitchell left behind a legacy of his own. In addition to being a hero of the historic moon landing, Mitchell was certain about the presence of extraterrestrials. He publicly said that top military authorities had kept UFO evidence under wraps and out of the public domain. Mitchell's belief was influenced by his childhood in New Mexico, which lies near the White Sands testing range operated by the U.S. Army. There, he said, he had often seen flying saucers since he was a young boy. Mitchell went further in an interview speculating that nuclear weapons were used by extraterrestrials to save humanity from destroying itself. This statement seemed to be an expression of appreciation for these alien powers helping to keep humans alive. Many different interpretations exist about these claims and sightings. Some people might interpret these remarks as clear evidence of alien activity or the presence of unexplained events. Others may argue that more conclusive evidence is necessary before reaching judgments about such events, or they may offer opportunities for alternate interpretations. In the end, how one interprets these findings depends on personal viewpoints and how much credence is placed on eyewitness testimony. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.